guys, welcome back to the Untrained Unprofessional Shooting Range. I'm Nobody, and it's good to see you. And wow, that sun is really bright. It's kind of early in the morning. It's gonna be 100 today, and I thought I would kind of get out here before it got unbearably uh, smoking hot. And unfortunately, some other people have decided to do the same thing. And while I was reconfirming zero on the rifle, had some people on dirt bikes go across and not even paying attention that Someone had been out here shooting before they even got here. So, yeah, people are idiots. Oh well, it is what it is, right? So luckily, they took off south of me and uh, hopefully they don't come back by the time I'm done shooting. This is the third time I've attempted to shoot this video. Well, I've actually shot this video. This is number three. And it's all because of little stupid things that have come up and I've screwed up on. So the first time I shot this video, what happened was uh, two things. Uh, one was my scope selection. I was using a Gen 3 Vortex 1 to 10. And at 100 yards, the dot is basically the size of the one inch pasty dot that I'm using for my target. And makes it actually might be a little bit bigger. So as I'm trying to see it, I can't even see my point of aim. And as I'm doing this, I get little flashes of orange and anyway, some of you may be able to pull it off and you know, it's like, I'm not a precision shooter. It's never been my game. I just don't have the patience for it. So this is a true effort that I'm putting in. I'm testing my abilities, the little that I have on precision shooting. So hope you guys appreciate it. The uh, second part of the first video was, uh, you know, it's like I just might be a little bit of a spaz and I'm not sure really why I'm such a spaz. Ah. Okay, that might be a reason. Well, anyway, Second video that I actually did yesterday, everything was going fine. I get back and was starting to edit and I noticed that uh, my forehand had actually slipped off of my rest and I wasn't paying attention to it. So my barrel was actually sitting on my rest. So I was getting def barrel deflection and it was impacting higher. And I caught the fact that, you know, it was like that had happened, but I just didn't realize how early in the process it had happened. So this is attempt number three, and it's fairly decent out. I do have a south wind coming at me. It's about five, 10 miles per hour. It's supposed to get gustier here today at some point, and I'm hoping I'm done before that. So let's try this again. What I am using is this guy. It is a four to 24, so plenty of magnification, and it could help me hopefully uh, get a little bit tighter groups. And I will tell you, having shot this rifle now, several different attempts, that the acceptable accuracy is about like that. So, which is about two, well, it ranges anywhere between an inch and a half and two and a half inches, depending on the round. So you know, barrel accuracy is only going to be so much, and this is not a match grade barrel. So we know that going in. Now, what I'm going to be looking for is after the actual test is if there's a point of impact shift. And how I'm going to determine that is by one, I'll do my three different test rounds, which is a, and they're cutting across. Good thing I'm just doing this part. It, I'm going to do three different rounds. I got a Freedom Munitions 223. I have a Fiocchi 223. And then I have the AAC 77 Grain Sierra Match King. So I'm going to do three different uh, goes at it the first time. And then I'm going to do a torture test, which is going to be 200 rounds. 
And you're of course saying, well, that doesn't sound too much like torture. Well, what I'm gonna do between, well, in between every mag, I have a piece of OSB out here that I'm going to bash the barrel into. And that is gonna simulate, you know, some type of real world occurrence, you know, where you're running around and you're hitting your barrel against stuff as you're going through rooms or you're just lazy or whatever and you don't put your rifle up well and it falls down, you know, it's like, whatever, you know, it's like, maybe you're just clumsy and you bash your barrel and if it's not bedded, it could potentially shift. So that's what we're trying to do is see if we can get the barrel to shift under some type of torture test. And then after those 200 rounds, I'm gonna let it cool off and I'll go ahead and run my boar snake through it a couple of times. And then I am going to shoot those three different rounds again and see what it does. All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and do the freedom first. And the sun is just in my eyes. Okay, swapping over to the Fiocchi. Okay, now the AAC. All right guys, so this is group one. This is our baseline that we're measuring everything against. Here's our Freedom, our Fiocchi, and our AAC 77 grain Match King. So we would hope that the Match King would do better than the regular range ammos. And yes, it it is doing that. So that is good. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the torture test and see if we can get a point of impact shift after the test. All right, so we're ready to go. We're gonna do the torture test. Having done this two times before, I got some experience. I know I'm gonna need gloves, at least for this hand, because that is gonna get really hot. So, and the wind's starting to pick up. So we need to hurry and get this going. And unfortunately, I don't have any cool drills with a big, huge scope like this to get this thing that hot, so, I am just going to basically burn ammo for the sake of this test. I hope you guys appreciate it. Which, if you do, give me a like, subscribe, comment, comments please. You know, it's like if there's anything that I could be doing better or whatnot, or if you just like everything, great. Keeps me on track to know if I'm doing a good job for you guys. And if you're really appreciative, you know what, I'm on Patreon. This stuff is expensive. You know, I'm about to run through 200 rounds. Actually, this is pushing me over 600, so do the math. Patreon.com forward slash nobody training. I'll put that right there. Here we go. And simulate real world stress. bang it all kinds of different ways. I am gonna have to load some mags here in a minute. I only have 130, well, I just didn't bring more mags. More bangy. And just so you know, I'm hitting this hard enough to where I'm actually leaving indentations in the OSB. So I'm legitimately trying to get something stupid to happen. All right, I'm gonna load some mags really quick. All right, hustling to keep everything hot. Last mag. Wow, 
Wow. Let me uh, make sure that. Okay, I'm good. I'll show you guys in a second. Is this the problem with reman ammunition? Okay. That needs to cool off. And then I can run the boar snake through and we'll do the last part of the accuracy test to see what it does. But here's what happened. I had a partial extraction. <laughs> the back end of the case actually ejected out. This was partially attached apparently and broke as it was coming out and another round was feeding in and so it caused a malfunction. So, but yeah, reman ammunition, uh, you never know what you're going to get. I will tell you this is the first one that I've had in uh, probably, I don't know, the two, 3,000 rounds of this reman ammunition that I have shot over the last uh, year, year and a half. So it's going to happen, but it's not gonna happen that often, I would think. And just so you can see, those are where I've been impacting the board. So haven't been gentle. All right guys, so we're gonna go ahead and do the, the Freedom, Fiocchi, and AAC again, aiming at the same point of aims and see if there's a shift in the point of impact. Okay, on to the Fiocchi. And AAC. Okay, so you can see the three unmarked holes. Not much of a difference. I, I would say that the variation on that, or actually on all these groups, is more me than anything. So we move to the Fiocchi. And you can see it's about right there. And then the AAC. Well guys, I would say that if the fit between your extension and your upper receiver is fairly decent, you don't have a lot of play in it, just a little bit, a couple thousandths, three to five thousandths of an inch, I would say probably bedding isn't the isn't what something you need to really worry about, you know, especially if it's just a plinker. Now, if you're trying to build a match grade rifle and you know it's like you're going through the whole process of shooting either something like a match king, you know, or you're doing hand loads or whatever and you're trying to get these tiny little bug holes, then I would probably bet it, you know, just to take out any variation that could potentially happen. Now, I will go through and, well, actually, so I'll actually bed this barrel, but what I'm going to try to do, I'm gonna figure, see if I can figure out a way to kind of wallow out that hole just a little bit more, and maybe do like a 100 round test of just beating it like every 20 rounds or something like that, and seeing if we can get some more variation in it, you know, just for a poorly made upper receiver, and then go through and bed it, but I'll have to see if I can figure out how to do that without compromising the receiver. <laughs> Don't want uh, my last uploaded video to be by my wife and it's in memoriam. That would suck. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. You know how hard it was to go through this whole thing without 
taking a hit. <laughs> 